Today is my grandma's birthday. What is going on, you guys? Another one of those late started a day videos, and uh, we're still trying to get some work done. So today is going to be the start of the engine preparation. Now, I kind of spent like an hour looking for my copper spray, and I literally just drove by AutoZone, and I told myself, I have a can somewhere. Apparently, I don't. So, I may or may not get the uh, head stud, head gasket, head attached back to the block after we tear it down, but um, we can always do that tomorrow. But today's goal is to pretty much install everything in this box so we have a fail pro oil pan gasket a lot of people run this uh with you know a dab of rtv some people run it dry i've always ran it dry never had a single problem with the fail pro brand itself but i'm going to be using this i want to install this tap the pan i want to install the head gasket if i decide to go buy copper spray or full send it without copper spray who knows Install the intake manifold gasket because if you guys saw yesterday's video, Paco dropped off the OBD-1 LS intake manifold, which we are going to be using over the stock B20 giraffe manifold. Head stud to go with the head gasket, so that's going to determine whether I get copper spray or not. Gasket with the thermostat is on the inside. Change that sucker out. Throttle body gasket, and uh, I just noticed that this TPS sensor is busted. Paco said something about needing a new map sensor and usually HMO they take off the units here on this throttle body on the engines that they sell and they give it to you in a box but apparently I didn't get it so I don't have a TPS nor do I have a map sensor on that one still debating if I just want to use my um, Elnabrock you know throttle body which is a little bit bigger bore has a map and it has a TPS sensor this came off a 600 horsepower uh, coupe that my friend parted out so may use this who knows so let's pull this engine out get it under the light here in case we lose some daylight and let's start tearing down the engine Alright guys, so I decided to put the engine on the stand so that way I can have a little bit of leverage when I'm using you know, the torque wrench to either torque or remove the head bolts. I just stripped everything off the cylinder head and block to make process a lot easier, quicker and more efficient without all the stuff in the way. Although I'm not using that manifold so that was going to come off regardless. I'm not using that alternator just because my CGS tuck harness in the CRX is for OBD0, OBD1 and this is OBD2. I'm going to be using that alternator over there. Header, heat shield, distributor came off. The power steering pump and bracket came off. I'm not gonna be using those. So now I'm gonna remove the valve cover and uh, take off the timing cover, all that good jazz to remove the cylinder head off the block. And um, I don't have the crank pulled to as of right now, but I think I'm gonna try to lock the flywheel into place and uh, break this sucker loose so we can do the timing belt, water pump, and head stud, head gasket all of that jazz so If you guys haven't already 
got the memo from the earlier clips. It's Halloween right now, and uh, only one person can't buy because my house is too scary. Anyways, so cylinder head is off. Um, block is looking really good. I haven't broke the crank pulley loose yet because I wanted to lock the uh, crank into place and I couldn't do that without the flywheel bolts which I have right there and I had to dig the whole corner out get to the bottom tote and um, find this flywheel clutch setup this came from my EF sedan uh, before the twin disc type R flywheel competition uh, stage 4 six puck unsprung and uh, look at this missing a ton of pucks and uh, not a single slippage at 400 horsepower this one being the worst and this was part of my hoarding pile so you know when in need I have them flywheel bolts and clutch bolts right there so I'm not gonna use this clutch because I want I don't want to risk it even though it never slipped on me and has a ton of life left if you guys remember when Zosh put his B20V turbo together last year um, people were telling him don't run that clutch that he had because it was missing puck and it's gonna you know not work well for him but I spoke with him I told him I said look just run that clutch bro it looks nothing like mine you should be okay and he never had an issue whatsoever until he pulled the engine out and went k-swap so I'm probably gonna order a new disc the same six puck unsprung or um, you know an ACT one or something but but I'm probably gonna be using this pressure plate no warpage no discoloration whatsoever the flywheel when I threw it in my stand a long time ago it was also resurfaced so this is golden I'm gonna be using that that a new puck for this motor originally I was supposed to use my twin disc right here but I think it's a little overkill for a 250 horsepower car and uh, you know I'd rather use that when the GSR or the CSS engine goes in that car when the YouTube challenge is all over so anyways I'm gonna use these bolts stick them on the crank put some 17s lock it break that loose remove the cover do the timing stuff so two flywheel bolts right there square um, pry bar right there wedge between this Long bar, breaker bar, whatever. Easy peasy. So, it's a new day guys, um, I spent an hour trying to find the nozzle for my copper spray and I know I know it had a nozzle on it when I bought it and then I dropped it over there which is that dent right here and then I took it off to shake it and the nozzle has gone. So <laughs> I don't know where it's at and I need to get that sucker sprayed so I can install the head back on the block so the search continues I took a nozzle off one of my spray cans and he worked out so I sprayed the head gasket two layers five minute in between and uh, has a pretty nice coverage so it's ready to go on to the block now and um, copper spray helps seal especially for my b20 that I um, you know pretty much is opened and reclosing without any type of machine work all I did was clean the surface up get any gunk gashes whatever off of it I did the same to the head and it's oil free on there as of right now that's why it's tilted that way and the head studs 
they are all installed has molly lube on top and the bottom i torque the uh where's the instructions i torque this right here with the allen key on top to 10 pounds as it says right over here somewhere uh <laughs> i don't know but I torque these to 10 pounds and then um, you know again I clean the surface I install the dowel pins ahead of time and uh, cylinder head is ready to go on molly lube is in place so my fat fingers won't struggle to try to get it when the head's already on you know the block cylinder head is on ARP head studs are on and uh, the two taller ones for the non VTEC go in the center and then the other ones go on the outside I torqued it down in three sequence of 30 50 80 and it went a lot smoother than I thought because 80 is pretty damn high and uh, everything is looking really good so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the intake manifold right there give that a good scrub kind of you know have that drying out while i prep everything to get this engine to be more complete what i'm doing right now is i'm just going to install the cam cam cap due to timing i'm not going to show you guys that because i've done it a jillion times before and uh try to get the valve cover back on i didn't buy an end seal i might have to use the old one clean it up put some rtv on it and uh, seal the valve cover back on here. I'm not gonna worry about the valve lash until it's in the car and really hear how bad it is. Oh, and I also ordered a new six puck competition unsprung disc that should be here on Sunday, three days from now, and then we'll officially make that transmission. I did the timing and uh, I guess the GoPro didn't catch it but what I did was I had the crank um, you know turned to like 90 degrees where all of the pistons were dead even with each other halfway through the cylinders and then put the cams on torque everything down so the thing is you don't want the piston to be TDC like you guys probably seen in earlier clips because when I'm adjusting this um, shaft you know it's gonna move the valves up and down and you don't want it to be tapping on top of the piston you know until we get this to TDC and uh, up arrow lining up these marks on the gear uh, teeth itself putting the uh, crank back to TDC white mark uh, plastic um, guidance line right here and then once you get this to TDC this and this to TDC I worked from this end pulling the belt you know nice and tensioned over and using a 12 millimeter kind of like maneuvered it around a tad bit until the teeth lined up and then slide it over the same thing for this side you know move it around with the 12 mil get these teeth to uh, line up and slide right over and then easiest for me to tension the tensioner is to put a hanger down into the spring down there pull it up you know get it nice and tensioned and then tighten up the 14 millimeter bolt for the tensioner there and then what i did was i did four revolutions well not four but i cycled this cam gear twice right by hand cranked it all the way until everything's back to tdc and then double check all the marks again make sure they're you know where it's supposed to be at and uh that's pretty much how i do timing so 
belt tension is good everything's lined up and uh, i'm gonna put this cover back on probably gonna do the valve cover as well and then we'll move on to the intake manifold i cleaned it over here not sure what i'm gonna do with the throttle body just yet but i have to take off this gasket because um, earlier I was kind of picking on it and ripped it so intake manifold is fully bolted up new gasket is in place and the original one holy shit it was a pain in the ass to get off it was super caked up on there and I had to use my custom razor blade uh, gasket scraper and uh, this helped a lot with a little bit of a light wire wheel to get the rest of it off the um, cylinder head and uh, manifold is on so uh, I don't think I'm gonna you know carry on showing you all the little small things you know like swapping out the auto bodies and fuel rail and all that it's just minor stuff the box here it's not 100 percent uh cleared out just yet got to pull the pan off which i'm going to do right now tap it and um i believe rear main seal right here other than that this box is near empty and uh we'll do that once the engine is off the stand but this video has already been ongoing for two days and uh, you guys kind of got the memo that we're just changing out all of the maintenance stuff on the motor before it gets made to the tranny and then put into the car. Uh, quick little recap. New head gasket with copper spray. It never uh, hurts to put a layer of copper spray. And we did ARP head studs. And then we did water pump, timing belt, and tensioner. Retimed it. And then we uh, resealed the valve cover gasket so that we, uh, you know, we don't get those little corner leaks. Everything has been torqued down to spec and then intake manifold with new gasket as well as thermostat with its new gasket as well so i have no doubt in my mind this b20 is going to do its job just great and um hopefully we don't run into any issues hopefully we'll make some decent power on you know a baby turbo kit and uh it holds up on a 2000 mile journey when everything's all said and done I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you guys did. And thank y'all for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.